Welcome back to another episode of DIY Golf Car Garage. Today we're working on a Yamaha G29, or better yet, known as the Drive. We're installing a Rocks spindle lift kit, 6 inch. We're going to get this thing jacked up in the air. So, let's go ahead and get started and see what size tires we can get under this thing. Okay, now I've got the jack here, i got my jack stands on each side of the car. Now I've got to allow enough room, once I get this thing lifted, to get my tires on, so I made a little four by four block that I'm gonna put on the jack so I can get this car up even higher. Now, before you lift it up, always remember, go ahead and loosen your lug nuts first. Last thing you wanna do is have that tire spinning while it's up in the air. Okay, I've went ahead and removed this tire and wheel assembly. So that you can actually see a good location to put your jack. You want to make sure that it's under the steel of the frame before you let this jack down. Also, while you're doing this, in the jacking up process, make sure to scotch your back tires. Last thing we want this thing to do is roll backwards when we let this jack down. So, I've got this one set. Go over and set the other side. Same place as this. Same amount of distance from the front corner to right here. Okay, now we've got the tire and everything out of the way. First thing we want to do is go ahead and let's go ahead and remove all the cotter pins. We have three that we've got to get out of the way. No, four. One, and save them, because we'll need them later. Two, Three. Pop the dust cap off. And here's number four. Now, the 19 millimeter socket, we'll go ahead and remove the hub. Once again, we'll save this because we'll reinstall it later. Now we want to go ahead and take these two nuts and bolts off. Hold the knuckle arm to the spindle. Now it's time to get the old spindle out so we can put the new spindle in. Now let's clean this up before we put the new one back in. Now that we've got the front suspension all nice and cleaned up, before we put the new spindle in, there's a few things we need to take off the old one to reuse. We have washers or alignment seals on both ends. Then right down the center here, we have a spindle tube. The quickest way to get that out is just a large screwdriver Put it inside there so that it blocks it and just tap it. Pull that right out. Now once you get this out, give it a good clean up. We'll grease it and get ready to put it inside the new spindle. So let me get this thing cleaned up. Now before we start assembling our new drop spindle, and figure out which one goes on this side. The way you always can tell is you want the angle going towards the outside of the car. Because what this is doing is moving the front tire out front. Also another way to tell, driver's side actually says rocks right up and down the front here. So we know this one's pointing outside, 
on that side. This one, point out front, no rocks. It goes on this side. First thing we want to do is go ahead and get our spindle tube and put some just regular standard grease on it. No need to overcoat it. Just want a light coat on it. Wipe off in the excess. You know, it's put just a little bit around the edges to actually help hold on the dust seals. And if you next slide it into place. The bolt that goes down through the center, you also want to put just a real light coating. This helps it go down easier and will help prevent rust. A little bit on the thread so the nut will go on easier. Tighten all this up. Be time to get the hub on. Okay, now that we've got the uh, bolt securely in, it's time to put the cotter pins in. We do not want to forget those. Those are a big safety feature. Okay, we got those in. Now it's time to put our hub on. Now I have put a light coat of grease on it. What we'll do is just go ahead and slide it on. We put our washer back on. And our nut. And tighten it down. That's good. Now our one last cotter pin. Our dust cap. And we're done with this side. Now, let's go do the other side. Okay, got the front end done, now we're gonna work on the back. This car did have a Mad Jack's rear flip seat on it. I wanted it out of the way, so I can get the lift on the back. In order to do that, I removed the two bolts at the top, the two bolts on the bottom in the bag well, and just set it off. It's actually that easy. Okay, now we're gonna put some scotch blocks up front so the car doesn't roll off while I'm trying to lift it up, and uh, get this thing up in the air. I need to get these tires and the wheels off. Okay, I've got my brakes locked down. Let's get these nuts off the back so we can get these tires off. Okay, now what we want to do is come in here with the jack and we want to place this 
right underneath the rear portion of the rear arm because what we're fixing to do is lower these shocks down. Now, all I've done here is put just a little bit of pressure so that the rear arm doesn't drop when we drop these shocks. Now, I'm going to remove this cover and next we'll loosen the shocks. Okay, now what we want to do is go ahead and take this bolt going across here loose. Next, we're going to go ahead and take it out. The rear stabilizer bar. Okay, now let's go up top and look at taking the shocks loose. Okay, as you can see, we've got the inspection cover off. And what we're going to be doing now is removing this bolt, it's the actual top bolt, bolts the spring, the shock assembly, to the actual frame. So we'll take these out on both sides. Then we're going to lower the lower arm in order to put the top portion of the lift kit in. Now we'll do the other side. Now what we're going to do is we're going to lower the rear arm where the jack is sitting and give it just enough room so that we can insert this bracket. This portion here will go up where the shocks were just mounted and we'll mount this using the hardware that we took out. Eventually the shocks will mount here. This will give us a lot of distance and a lot of lift. Okay, now that we got the bracket up into the brace, a trick to getting the holes to line up is get you a Phillips head screwdriver, put it in the hole and just move it around. And that way you can get the hole centered. Now what we'll do is we'll use the bolt and nut that we took out originally, put it back through, and mount it. Now let's do the other side. Okay, now for the rear stabilizer bracket, that's the bolt that goes in the top and mounts where the old one did mount. We have new hardware for that one. And then we come down here and mount the rear stabilizer bar to the new bracket. And there should be one more bolt that we'll put in right here. But that one actually is going to go to our rear seat when we put it back on. So what I'm going to go ahead and do now is tighten this up. Let's get some tires and wheels on this thing so it looks like. Okay. Got the tires and wheels on all the way around. Lug nuts on tight. Now we're going with a 23 inch tire with a 14 inch rim. This car looks good except for one little minor detail. We can't go anywhere because of the way this side seal here is designed. It's actually called the tire. So what we're going to do so I can continue running my 23 inch tires, I'm going to trim along this plastic side seal going along with the body curvature that's already there instead of the Yamaha design which actually looks like it turns back in. So 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give me some painter's tape, masking tape, whatever type of tape you'd like to use, and just go along. There we go. That gives me a good clean line to take my Dremel and just trim this little corner off. You can use a Dremel, jigsaw, uh, hacksaw, anything like that that you want because all we're doing is just cutting away plastic. So let me get my Dremel and we'll, let's get started. Now I clean my edge up, it'll look good. 